so good to have you guys watching this video again. I really do appreciate everyone that watches the video and everyone that subscribes to the channel and everyone that likes the video. So thank you so much. So today's video is all about how I edit my night photography shots. Um, I do get a few questions about what program I use and how I edit my night photography shots. So I thought I'd do a quick video. 90% of the time I use Photoshop. Um, and when you take a, a raw photo into Photoshop, it brings you into Adobe Camera Raw, which is pretty much the same as Lightroom. So for the Lightroom users, literally the same rules apply. Whatever I do in Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw, you guys can use in Lightroom. So let's get into the video straight away. All right, let's load up Photoshop. Yes, guys, so here is the image in Photoshop. And like I said before, whatever I do, like in this camera or setting in Photoshop, the same rules apply for Lightroom. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten the picture up. I didn't use a tripod. I literally took this picture with, um, I was bending down on one knee. Uh, I wanted to capture it from a lower angle. So as you can see, it's not straight. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the geometry and I'm going to auto adjust it, see what it looks like. Uh, it looks cool, there's a lot of dead space at the top. This is before, and I really like the um, the whole puddle, like literally here, but the auto kind of just chops half of that off. So what I might do is I'm gonna rotate it myself. Let's see if that's any better, then I may have to crop it later. Uh, we'll see. So again, you definitely have this option in Lightroom. All right, that's a little bit better. Um, and what I'll do is I'll crop the edges off in, in fact, we'll do it now, constrain crop. So we'll leave that there for now. I may go back to that because I'm not sure. Should just try a bit more. Yeah, it's a lot better for me. All right, cool. So while we're here, we go to the optics and remove chromatic aberration and use profile correction. Literally, what I, that just did is before I had the like a vignette and it was darker, but it kind of takes the vignette away. All right, so here's to where the magic happens. So first thing I'm gonna do is, and I always do this, is I take my highlights down and take my shadows up. I think I'm going to take the exposure up because it is actually quite a dark image. The ISO is at a thousand. But um, yeah, I'm going to take that up a little bit. Contrast, that's with the contrast up. That's with the contrast down. I'm going to kind of push it up a little bit. Whites, I always check my whites up and down. So that's with the whites up. That's with them down. I'm going to put them up a little bit. And blacks, 90% of the time I take my blacks down. Just to have that kind of moody vibe to it. Yeah, I love that. I really love what it's doing with the reflection in the puddle there. So that looks cool. Texture, I generally take it up. Clarity, sometimes I find that clarity, taking clarity down works quite nice. Um, it's kind of give it like a majestic kind of glow to it. But I'm going to, I'm actually going to take it down a little bit. The haze, take the haze away. That's with no haze. That's with the haze. Yeah. I kind of like the majestic vibe it brings, but this section here just looks very, very cloudy and muddy. And then above that, there's nothing to it. It just dark, so we won't do that. I'm actually going to put that at plus five. All right, vibrance. Let's take that up a little bit, see what it looks like. Love that. Saturation, I'm going to go up a touch. Yeah. Cool. Up next, we have the curves. What I love to do is just kind of give it a matte look. So I'll make two points here. One 
here, one above that there. And I'll just kind of push that up a tiny bit. And then this goes down a little bit. So my highlights, it kind of gives it a matte look. And then I'll bring that down. So, so far, I'm really loving that. Um, I may take the saturation down in a second, but I'm loving that look. Uh, let's, let's take the exposure up a little bit more. Cool. All right. Detail. All the time I sharpen mine, I go to 100. I find that works nice for me. And the noise reduction. Reduction, sorry. So at about 10. Zoom in on that. It's quite noisy because my ISO was quite high. So I might take it up a little bit more. So we're at 20. And I'm really loving that already. Just, yeah, nice. All right, so color mixer. Again, this is where more magic happens. Um, I think I spend a lot of time here just adjusting colors and everything like that. First of all, we'll look at the saturation. And 90% of the time, for me, this is like trial and error. So I would like pick a color like the orange. I'll take it down, take it up, see if I like it. And um, for now, I'm going to probably leave the orange where it is. I know I'm going to take the red up because I want the that bust to pop. I want the red in the bust to pop. So that's going to go up. While I'm here, I'm going to take the luminance, go to luminance as well. That's really affecting the lights on the bus, if you can see. It looks quite cool. So as you might see that how, how that looks overall. All right, I like that. All right, let's go to the yellows now. Let's go down, up. It's really affecting that building. Quite like the pop of the yellows. What I might do is I might leave that up and then take the whole general saturation down back at the top, but for now we'll leave that there. I'll check the luminance of it again, up all the way, down all the way. It looks a little bit better with it up, right, plus 23. Nice. I really love the blues there, so I'm going to see if we can affect those. It's nice, it's affecting a little bit too much there with that car light, so and take them down a little bit. We've got the blues there. Yeah, I really love that. So the luminous of the blues has gone up. What I am going to do, because it's really bothering me, I'm going to take the whole saturation down and the vi vibrance as well. The vibrance comes down, saturation down. So saturation, put it back down to zero. I'm also going to take the exposure down. Just a touch. Yeah. All right. So that's the colors for me. Color graded. Sorry, the color mixer. Zoomed in, zoomed out. Let's show you before and after. So the one to the right is the before. Sorry, the one to the right is the after. One to the left is the before. The colors are popping a lot more. Um. Yeah. Especially the blues. The blues look really nice, actually. It's affecting it really nice. So what I do next, after I've been in Camera Raw of Photoshop, I will go to Open as an Object, just so I can edit this if, again if I need to. And then it just takes me to the Photoshop main page. So here we have it. You know, I'm going to crop this straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another copy. And I'm going to crop it. You know, that Insta crop. And I'm going to just adjust, adjust it a little bit because I'm still not happy with how straight it is. That's it there. So we're chopping some off the top and some off the bottom. Still doesn't look 100% straight to me. Uh, so we'll go again. All right. 
right, so I'm looking at the bus. Yeah, that's a lot better for me. All right, so we've cropped that. That looks a lot better. So what I do next is I go to color balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the color balance down here. So I literally click this arrow here. It gives you color, color balance adjustment layer. And what I do is I loop that layer. So I've got three versions of the layer. The first one that I'm going to change to shadows. And this literally just affects the shadows. Um, I think I'm probably going to just make it a little bit cooler in the shadows there. Um, again, I'm probably not going to adjust these, but I'll show you any what it looks like. A hint of red looks quite nice, actually, so I'll leave that at plus four. I'm not going to touch the magentas or greens. Up next, I'm going to the next adjustment layer, midtones. I probably am not going to adjust these, um, but I'll show you anyway. Cyan does, like, taking it to Cyan does look quite nice. And there's the other way. So maybe a tiny bit, six. Uh, we've got the yellows and blues. Yellows up and then blues all the way down. It's yellows all the way up. So kind of going to leave it there. In fact, I'm going to leave it where on zero. And then we have our highlights. Again, all the way up, that's what it looks like for cyan. The reds, I'm going to leave that where it is, so put that back to zero. Uh, we'll go to the blues. All the way up, the highlights, and then the yellows. Kind of like the, the exposure of the yellow in that building, especially the reflection as well. Yeah, we'll put that there. Nice. So yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these three layers in a group. And I'm gonna name it C B for color balance. So that's before that's after. It's kind of saturated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opacity down of that. So it's not too much. There we have it. Another thing I like to do is selective color. So again, we're going to find, we we'll go to the adjustment layer here, selective color. I'm going to work on these reds. Um, again, up, like the CNs in the reds, show you both ways. Kind of like it down a bit. It's kind of making everything pop. The magentas, that looks really cool. Um, if you see this, this part of the building here, I wasn't expecting that. But again, down and then up is making the bus pop a bit more. The reflection is looking nice. So again, I'm going to leave that there. The yellows. So literally this, what this is doing is affecting the colors within the colors. So that's with the yellows down on the reds and that's with the yellows up on the reds up doesn't make too much of a difference but down it kind of gives it kind of a purple vibe so we'll put that there and then the blacks and the reds that's with it all the way up and that's with the blacks all the way down i think for this image the blacks up a touch will look really nice most of it's affecting this building here which is okay up next, we're going to go to the same place, adjustment layers, and I'm going to go to the yellows. Again, CNs in the yellows. Again, it's just affecting the building. It looks really, really cool. I don't want it to be too saturated, so I'll put that up a to the CNs a tiny bit. So the magentas in the yellows, we'll leave that at zero. All right, the yellows within the yellows now. Let's cool it down. That's brightened up. I think I'll leave that at zero as well. And then the blacks. That's all the way down. That's all the way up. Hmm. 
I'll leave that at zero. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and same thing and check the blues out now. So the cyan's, I'm going to turn those cyan's up in the blues. Magenta's in the blues. <sighs> Taking that down looks really nice. I love what it's doing with the lights. So I'm going to take that down a bit. The yellows are in the blues. This is mainly affecting the lights here. It's not making a difference for me. So we'll leave that at zero. And then the blacks are in the blues. Yeah, let's turn that up because that looks really nice. The lights here. Cool, so that's how I would um, basically edit my image. So once I've done all my selective color adjustments, I then group them. And we'll call that SC for selective color. And there we have it. And then my final sharpen, I... Group all those image, all those layers together, and I literally will go to filter, other high pass, radius of three, okay, and then I make that into soft light. And what that does is it literally just sharpens the image. So you can see it there. That's with it sharpened. That's with how it's sharpened. And then I either save it to post or save it to print. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just show you another edit I've done with it just sped up without me talking so you can kind of see the same process again. All right, check this out.